All right, so we've just seen uh, what is a line integral, and now what we're going to do is do a couple examples of how would you actually compute some line integrals. So here's a uh, problem. It says, uh, find the mass of this ring of wire which has density uh, delta of xy equals 1 plus xy squared and lies on the unit circle. Okay, so what, what you should imagine here is we've got the unit circle... Uh, right there, that's representing a ring of wire, but that wire is sort of thicker in some spots and maybe thinner in some spots. The density depends on where you are. And then uh, what we're going to do then is compute the mass. So what we need to do is integrate along the curve the density function times the length, right? The density of a length of wire times the length of wire equals a mass. Add those up over the entire wire. Well, that is going to give us the mass of that wire. Okay, so to do this, we need an x of t, y of t, parameterization. Well, it's the unit circle. So if we parameterize the unit circle, that's cosine of t, y, uh, sorry, x is cosine of t, y equals sine of t. That's a standard parameterization. That would be for t's between 0 and 2 pi. And that would mean that x prime of t, y prime of t, would be what? Negative sine of t, cosine of t. And um, then the length, so this is my position vector r. This would be my velocity vector r prime. And then the length of r prime would be the square root of the negative sine of t squared plus cosine of t squared. Uh, but that's really the square root of sine squared plus cosine squared of t, which is just 1. <clears throat> okay, so that r prime of t length is 1, uh, because, of course, this moves around the unit circle at a constant velocity. So that 1 there is sort of representing that for each little time t, for each one unit of time, you're sort of moving one unit of length, actually. Um, which is interesting, because if you take uh, time from 0 to 2 pi, and, well, of course, the circumference of this is 2 pi, so it, you're going exactly 1 meter per second if you go around it. Um, if it takes you 2 pi seconds to go 2 pi length. So that's what that 1 actually means there. Okay, so that's r prime. We've got that set. So then what we really need to do is we need to integrate. We'll integrate from 0 to 2 pi the function, uh, our, our density, delta, times 1 dt, essentially. And this is what we would call ds. Okay, but of course, what is that delta? Well, we'll take that on the next screen here. So we're wanting the integral from 0 to 2 pi of delta times 1 dt. Now, if delta was 1, then we would just get 2 pi, which would just be the circumference of that circle. But delta is not 1. Uh, delta is equal to 1 plus x times y squared, if I remember correctly. Yes. And x is cosine of t and y is sine of t. x is cosine of t, y equals sine of t. And therefore, what we've really got then is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 plus cosine of t times sine squared of t dt. And now we just have a calculus 1 integral. Okay, it's just a calc 1 integral. It's an, so this line integral, this was really originally a line integral. Once you've done the understanding of a line integral and turned it into a dt integral, it's really just back to calc 1. Okay, and this problem to me looks like maybe a u substitution. Uh, if u was equal to a sine of t, uh, du would equal cosine of t dt. And then um, let's see, what are we going to have here? Well, it's not quite... 
not quite exactly going to work out that way because we've got 0 to 2 pi, and then we'll have, I guess we'll have sine squared of t plus cosine of t sine squared of t. Um, so really what we've got is we'll need, a, we'll need to really do this in two integrals. And we'll need, because this sine squared times 1 is sine squared. So this integral will have a u substitution, and this integral will have a standard half angle substitution. So let's take these in each step. So the first one will have integral of 0 to 2 pi. For the half angle, we'll have 1 minus cosine of 2t over 2 dt. The other one will become, uh, what is this? The integral of u squared du, and that's going to be taken from a sine of 0 is 0 and sine of 2 pi is 0, so from 0 to 0 of u squared du. And then um, completing the integral here, well, we'll just have 1 half t minus the sine of 2t over 4 evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, and then we'll plus u cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 0. Well, of course, that's going to be 0, and the other one, I think, is going to equal basically just pi, because if we plug in 2 pi, we'll get pi, plug in 0, we'll get 0, plug in 2 pi, and for sine of 2t, that'll be 0, as will sine of 0 be 0. So we'll have pi plus some other stuff. Okay, so the mass of this, um, the mass of this is actually equal to pi, even though the circumference was equal to um, 2 pi because the density was less than 1 a lot of the time. If you think about x, what x is and y squared, those numbers are, x's and y's are less than 1 usually, and so those, those numbers squared are going to be even smaller. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's do one more example here. Uh, this is a three-dimensional example. So you've got yourself a line of fence that's sitting along the curve r of t is t, t squared, t cubed. So now we're in three dimensions and this kind of fence is shooting off in space. And then the height of the fence is sort of different at different points, right? So what we're going to imagine here is the function gives you the height of the fence along this curve. Well, if you have height times length, that's going to be area. So the line integral is actually going to give you an area of one side of the fence here, okay? So in theory, what we have is an integral over the curve of the height of the fence times the length of the fence added up for the whole curve. That gives you the area of the fence, okay? Um, and now we need to start setting up our problem. So we need, we need to turn what's r of t. Well, r of t is t t squared t cubed, so the velocity as you go along this fence would be 1, 2t, 3t squared. And so the length, or the speed, if you will, the, uh, the velocity vector's length is, uh, would be the square root of 1 plus 4t squared plus 9t to the fourth, okay? And if you take that times dt, that'll be your ds. So there's going to be an integral now. I think it said t's go from 1 to 2. So t's go from 1 to 2. And the... I might need a little bit more room here. Let's, let's erase this. Give myself a little bit more space here. We'll say the area equals... So the integral from 1 to 2 of the function times the square root of 1 plus 4t squared plus 9t to the fourth dt. So that's my ds. I'm adding up the lengths, and then i got to multiply by the heights of the fence. Well, x is t, y is t squared, and z is t cubed. So the function of height will be 1 plus t, because x is equal to t, plus t to the fourth, because y is equal to t squared, and then we square it plus 1 over t cubed, because z is equal to t cubed. And now what this is then is a function. It gives you the height of the fence times the length of the fence. Add those up, you get area. Add up all the little areas, you get the total area. So there's an integral that's equivalent to the area of one side of the fence. And I'll leave it to you to uh, work out that integral if you want to know what the answer is.
All right, so there's a couple examples of standard line integrals, how to do them, how to set them up, and uh, you should be good to go on any of your uh, line integral problems now if you can sort of follow those examples and see the under, you know, understand the, the main ideas.